Hello guys, make sure to subscribe and make more like buttons. Oops. Today we're going to like do history of Captain Cook. But first, like fifty on um, the people that are not subscribed is forty three point eight percent of you. So don't forget to subscribe and make more like buttons for more videos. It's early right now, it's like almost seven. So that's why I'm talking like this. But I might talk better soon. Let's get started. History of Captain Cook by Side So Lowry. Enjoy the video. Special thanks to Wikipedia for this content for this video. P.S. Sorry again for the recording problem. I'm trying to fix it. Or fix it. If there's any other free recording themes, tell me in the comments comments below. Don't forget to do that if like and um and if you want um, and yeah, let's get started. Who is Captain Cook? James Cook is born seventh of November seventeen twenty eight to the 14th of February seventeen seventy nine. Was a British explorer, navigator, it called a Called the Carfager, or whatever it was, and captain in the British Royal Navy. He made detailed maps of Newfoundland, not found land, prior to making three voyages to the Pacific Ocean, during which he achieved the first recorded European continent with the eastern coast of Australia and the Hawaiian Islands, and the first recorded congregation of New Zealand. He's also Sideshow Brody Lowry's ancestor. P.S. I don't know what kind of place in the bunch or if he's on the list. His early years. James Cook was born yeah, I'm just gonna, in the village of Martin in Yorkshire and baptized on the 14th of November in the Paris suit of St. Cuthbert, but his name can be seen in the church register. He was the second of eight children of James Cook, 1693 and 1779, a Scottish farm Labrador from Ibdam, Ednam, and Waxburgshire, and his lo locally born wife, Grace Peace, 1701. To 1765 from Thornberry on Trees. In 1736, his family moved to Ayoe Home Farm at Grey on Great Ayton, where his father's employer, Thomas Scotty, paid for him to attend the Walker School in 1741. After five year, years of schooling, he began work for his father, who had been promoted to farm manager. Despite not being Formerly educated, he became capital, uh, capital in mathematics, astronomy, and charting by the time of his endeavor voyage. For leisure, he would climb a nearby hill, rosemary topping, enjoying the uh, an opportunity for solitude. Cook's cottage, his parents' last home, which he is likely to have visited, is now in. Melbourne, Australia, having been moved from England and reassembled brick by brick in 1934. <sighs> What's his death? After the month's stay, Cook attempted to resume the, his exploration of the Northern Pacific shortly after leaving Hawaii Island. However, resolution four miles broke, so the ships returned to Kilikalika. Bay for repairs, tensions rose, and a number of coils broke out between the Europeans and Hawaiians at Kililaka Kile Kile Bay. An unknown group of Hawaiians took one of Cook's small boats. The evening when the cutter was taken, the people had become insolent, even with threats to fire upon them. Cook intimidated to kidnap and let him the king of Hawaii. I'm actually not going to say his name, but uh, because it's very hard to say, but I'll just spell it. 
K A L A N I O P U U. And if you see, there's other stuff with it because it's ancient, or because this is 1700s Hawaii. His legacy, the Australian Museum acquired its Cook collection in 1894 from the government of New South Wales. At the time, the collection consisted of 115 artifacts collected on Cook's three voyages throughout the Pacific Ocean during the period 1768 to 80, along with documents in memoria, I think, related to these voyages, many of the Phonographic artifacts were collected at the time of first contact between Pacific peoples and Europeans. In 1935, most of the documents in Marbury were transferred to the Mitchell Library in the State Library of New South Wales. The prevent of the collection shows that the objects remain in the hands of Cook's widow, Elizabeth Cook, and her descendants until 1886. In this year, John McElwell and the great nephew Isaac Smith, Elizabeth Kitt's cousin, organized the display of the, uh, this collection at the request of the NSW government at the Colonial and Indian Exhibition in London. In 1887, the London based Ancient Genaria for the New South Wales government saw on Shaw Samuel bought John McQuell's items and also acquired items belonging to the other relatives, Reverend Canon Frederick Bennett, Mrs. Thomas Langdon, H.M.T. Alexander, and William Adams. The correction remained with the Colonial Secretary of NSW until 1894 when it was transferred to the Australian Museum once again. You can see more of this later on. Like you can see, like if you want to wish, if you want to like see all of it, don't forget to go on Wikipedia. Credit to Wikipedia for this. See you next episode. Make sure you to uh, make sure you subscribe to Sites of Lowry on to get more on so he can on for more content. Comment down below what you want to see in the next history of episode. One of the choices I would have done is, uh, oh, another one of those Captain Cooks, I don't know. But since the last episode was famous, or uh, was good, was, uh, not was good, I'm go I did Captain Cook. If you don't know who Captain Cook is, you know now. Make sure to subscribe and make one of those. Goodbye. Enjoy the video.